Yeah, it's right here. So on that mic? Yeah. That mic, that yeah. can't go there. Cool. Okay, thanks. Okay, we're ready? Well, I don't hear it. I'm here, dude. Thank you. You're a rock star. There's a question about are they in the right session? Because they were flipped. Yeah, they were flipped. They switched around. Do you want to explain that to them? Oh, well. Somebody give me this. Go. We're good. We're good. We're ready to start? Okay. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for coming to this session. My name's Bill McIntosh. I uh, live uh, 2,000 feet down the hill in Colorado Springs. And uh, it's a little bit lower, but still pretty, pretty up there. There's a slight change in the schedule because uh, this particular, I'm giving two presentations at this conference, and this one was more suitable for a webinar presentation, so we switched it around. So if you're expecting the one on Moodle question banks, that will be held this afternoon and at 1.30. And the one that was going to be held this afternoon at 1.30 is being held now this morning. And it's on monitoring and measuring learning in the flipped class. This is my eighth year of going into my ninth year of teaching. I've taught middle school the whole time and last year and uh, years before that I've taught seventh grade mathematics. Next year I'll be teaching seventh grade math and also seventh grade science at Challenger Middle School. And I went zero to 60 uh, overnight, you know, from being a traditional uh, classroom teacher to being the flipped teacher. So I went mastery we and uh, the flipped model uh, completely, uh, which was difficult. It was the hardest year I've ever had in teaching, but also the most, uh, it went by fast, <laughs> i tell you that. All right, so there's a, a slight difference between monitoring and measuring. I would say monitoring is more of you keeping your finger on the pulse of how individual students are going. Is this working for them? Is overall the program working? As opposed to measuring when you're actually trying to assess whether the desired learning objectives are being met and to what level. Okay? So I divide the assessment hierarchy into two basic groups. There's self-assessment, which I believe is the most important one, which is why I have it above the other directed assessment. In self-assessment, that's obviously the learner. We as adults are pretty good at being able to figure out if what we're doing is being effective that we're trying to learn, usually. Okay? Not always, all right? All right but kids, it's, it's a little bit harder. But how does a person self-assess whether what they're doing is working? Am I, I want to learn how to program in Java, and I'm gonna do it by myself, or somebody's gonna teach me, Am I being successful? Am I, am I getting it? You know, so you have ways to try to tell. And if you're the learner, one way to do is, are you doing good on your classwork? Am I getting, do I understand the questions that I'm being asked? And am I able to get the answers right most of the time? Um, I can look at my quizzes. And uh, if uh, you do automated quizzes, then the feedback.